G'day folks, welcome to this uh, After Action Report for my second campaign playthrough of the US Civil War. It is the end of turn 14, winter 1864, and the Union has, has won an automatic victory. They have exceeded their victory point benchmark by... Oh, they're sitting on 54, they needed 39... So they're 15 points ahead, and as soon as they're 12 or more ahead of that benchmark, they win. So they, they manage to reach the benchmark at 12 ahead, more than 12 ahead with a little bit extra to spare. Uh, this last term was really quite brutal um, throughout the south, throughout this whole region. Um, Mississippi has all but been vacated of Confederate forces bar Vicksburg, which, which holds out, and Holmes has a small force down so sort of just down south of uh, Columbia, down here, there is a small. <laughs> there's actually there's, there's one SP in one Confederate SP out in the Trans Mississippi Theater in Alexandria. That's all that is left. Um, and you can see Hancock has uh, arrived in Florida, crossed over the Tallahassee, then came back again and began driving up north, captured Savannah, um, cleared out. Uh, Confederate forces from the area. Gardner managed to retreat from Charleston. They captured Charleston. Um, so they're not far from linking up with Sherman. Sherman's been holding out here in Macon for, for quite a while. Um, just kind of containing Kirby Smith there with a large Confederate force. No activity here. Just happy to uh, to hold him whilst Hancock does all the work over here. The primary Union strategy was to do nothing up in Virginia. You can see these guys, there's currently Meade and Banks in command, they've done the, as little as possible. My strategy was don't waste actions in Virginia. In the first campaign I played, there was a lot of back and forth. It is hard to support an offensive. There's a lot of Stuarty's active out, the Stuart's cavalry is out in this area. I'll explain what's happening in West Virginia in just a moment. A lot of back and forth in, in Virginia and Northern Virginia, and it just felt like a waste of actions at the expense of activities in the Western and Trans Mississippi Theatre. So this time around, I entrenched and fortified as much as I could in Virginia. I still built up quite large armies. These are, I mean, Meade and Banks, they're at pretty much maximum command capacity. I think they've got about close to 18 SPs each, but they defended, they held, they only attacked when they kind of, when they needed to or where they felt they may have been able to make a difference. It never worked out anyway. Uh, instead, I focused most of my actions in this theater, in Tennessee, in Mississippi, Alabama, and to a large extent uh, in the Trans-Mississippi Theater, trying mainly to secure control of the Mississippi to facilitate the movement of um, supplies and reinforcements down the Mississippi as far as possible. Never managed to capture Vicksburg. It's elusive, but I was able to secure Memphis and a rail link down to Jackson, um, which is quite important. There's also, I mean, New Orleans is held, uh, Baton Rouge is held further south. You can see Natchez has been held for quite a long time. So there is a lot of Union control down sort of south of Vicksburg, but I was never able to clear the Mississippi completely. The critical success, so this is, this is um, I, I focus on a slow kind of broad front approach through Tennessee, through by clearing the rail line through Nashville, Bowling Green, Nashville. Um, so yeah, down here to Decatur and then across to Corinth and then down and a, a second main rail line from Memphis down as well. So I could get those, a couple of SPs down the river. Um, Grant was primarily active here with Sherman um, and a huge force. He was able to rail a large number of reinforcements to his army each turn. He facilitated this drive down here through Columbus. Then he switched over, so he came across here, um, switched over to Columbus, then came back again to Talladega. Um, and by that point, there was, there was a few critical battles here where uh, Grant, I think they were pro probably close parity of forces, but Grant rolled really well. Confederates didn't. I can't remember who was in command of the Confederates at the time, but Grant smashed them and then smashed them and then followed up and he just kept chasing 
these beleaguered Confederate SPs to virtual annihilation. Um, and over the course of, uh, really, it was just two actions. So Grant had a battle which he won considerably, forced the Confederates to retreat. The Union won the next initiative, and he attacked again. I think by that point, he outnumbered them two to one. So when he won that second battle, he attacked a third time. And by that point, yes, he'd lost a few troops, but the Confederates were down to, at that point, I think three SPs. And by the end of the turn, Grant just brought a heap of reinforcements on, brought his army back up to about 12-ish, and the Confederates could muster about five, six, seven, but then that's all their resources in the area. At the same time, then Grant broke off towards Atlanta. Um, another force broke down from Memphis, and it was just too much for the Confederates to deal with, uh, having sustained such heavy losses versus Grant, and they could not deal with everything that was going on. You can see at the bottom of this image here just how many uh, Union generals are active in this area. And there's more further south as well. I've got Burnside down in Baton Rouge. Um, so we've got Thomas has been reinforced with McPherson here to try and capture Vicksburg. Uh, I've got Schofield out on the left. I've got Steele further out west in the Trans-Mississippi. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, I've uh, removed one here, seven, eight generals plus two cavalry generals. Um, yeah, driving this, this my main offensive here through the Western Theatre. Uh, it was also helped, I'll point out, critically, by what I think was a pretty successful campaign by Hancock. A pretty lucky campaign as well, it's fair to say. So Hancock arrived down in Jacksonville, unopposed. And it's hard for the Confederates to get troops down here. The rail lines go as far as, as Brunswick. Um, they don't link up, so they go out to Thomasville. There's Tallahassee, and they can do sort of road reinforcement. Um, but it's, 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 it's tough. And their thinking at the time was, well, there's a couple of victory points out here. Tallahassee, Alusty, Jacksonville. There's other stuff going on that they didn't prioritize this. At the time, they were trying to fight back uh, in Charleston, and they did so successfully. They forced the Union out of Charleston, uh, and Hancock just had free reign here. He moved across to Alusty, Tallahassee, then came back again and started pushing north, um, secured Darien across the river there to support his supplies. Uh, I think there was a militia in Savannah, which he cleared out, and by that stage, he won a really important battle here. I can't recall who he was fighting. It wasn't Gardner. It was a more capable, here it is, it's probably still, uh, I think it was Beauregard. So I think Beauregard took command of a Confederate force of about two or three SPs, and Hancock, Hancock won a really important, I don't know what they're doing there, a really important battle, um, which eliminated, in fact, I think, the Confederate opposition. Uh, he then recaptured Charleston. So that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight victory points just from this sort of southern little drive. Um, I think it's fair to say that the Union lost the campaign in sort of Virginia in the um, the north eastern theatre. If you have a look what's going on here... Uh, Again, these guys have barely moved from their start. They, this is, in fact, their starting position. There's been a little bit of activity, but they're back where they started. But the Confederates um, tried to kind of get something happening out in West Virginia. They did recapture Charleston. They did have a link of supply depots. Um, Stuart's cavalry reached Chillicothe. I think that's how you pronounce it. My apologies. Um, this will disappear because if a, a Confederate control marker is in a northern city and it's unoccupied, it is removed. He then retreated to rebuild his supply networks. But um, yeah, by that stage, they just, they just can't do enough. It's easy for the Union to reinforce. So you can see here Hooker with five, Butler with two, Greg's here with his cavalry, um, and you've got Stuart with one, and Price with three, just barely hanging on. Um, so yeah, Confederates tried to make something happen out here. Um, but it's too easy for the Union to reinforce that area. Um, Confederate cavalry was a pain in the backside constantly. Forrest, you can see all these 
um, non-controlled areas. The break in the rail line, Nathaniel Bedford Forrest did that on one of the few, one of the last turns. He recaptured Columbus, Macon, Aberdeen, and a few of these as well. Um, forced a diversion of Union forces to deal with that. Morgan was very um, always a threat out here. Um, I think the Union did better to contain Morgan. It's much more difficult for Morgan to move across these rivers and mountains. Um, so he had a harder time of it. Uh, I tell you what, Van Dorn was also a pain out here in Arkansas. He was constantly removing these control markers, which undermined Curtis. I think Curtis was active out here at the time. His attempts, the, this this whole area here of Arkansas, Texas, Louisiana, um, was captured by Curtis and then the Confederates fought back just by cutting off his supplies. It's very fragile out here with these supply depots. Um, yeah, Confederates just basically cut off Camden before they had this, which isolated these. And uh, yeah, they had to basically, the Union had to rally and then take them all over again. And on that second attempt, they were more focused on, elimin on targeting, attacking and eliminating those Confederate SPs. But, as I said, the war, I think, was really won in the centre here in in the west um, via, as I said, those critical one, two, and sort of three supply paths which uh, facilitated the, the mass arrival of, of Union reinforcements. By that stage, um, the... The blockade was taking effect as well. Um, Confederates were only getting about 9, 10, if they were lucky, SPs um, each turn. I think they were down to about 9 on the last turn. It's still quite high, I suppose. Um, but compared to the Union 12, with the damage that the Confederates were suffering in, in most battles, um, there's just so much going on that it was difficult for the Confederates to, to do much. Uh, and yeah, it was kind of at a point where the Union were kind of picking and choosing what you can see here. Columbus is unoccupied with two um, out in South Carolina. Augusta is unoccupied for two. I mean, Hancock and, and Brennan here kind of have free reign. You've got Gardner with three in Branchville. Um, not standing much of a chance here. So yeah, this final turn was really... The Union running rings. So there you go, folks. Uh, union victory quite decisively on turn 14.